Yeah, thanks for having me. This is my first trip to Germany. So I'm based out of Chicago and had worked with the Les Mills US team for a few years and joined the global team right before the pandemic. So I've got to work across the world with uh, what's happening to health clubs and instructors during the pandemic and as we come out of it. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. We're so excited to be back to live. Nothing is like that live experience. And last month we had uh, some major events with Les Mills Live in New Orleans in the US and down in Melbourne, Australia. We had 3,000 people in attendance and both events sold out in a matter of days, which really speaks to how much people want to be back together. And we've got Les Mills Live London, our filming experience coming up in just a few weeks, 5,000 people in that one, and again, sold out in a matter of days. And um, these events have really been instructor before the pandemic. And what we're seeing now is our Les Mills Plus members and gym members are also coming to these events. So it really shows people are craving connection. They wanna be back together in this amazing experience of working out together with an amazing instructor. Being in isolation and not being with you know our friends or family has impacted us more than we even know today. And people during the pandemic got their own equipment. They got a treadmill, they got a bike, they got their dumbbells. And what's bringing them back into club is connection. They wanna be working out with their friends. They wanna have this experience together. So what we've seen is those clubs who have capacity restrictions lifted are already at 120% of pre-COVID capacity in their group fitness classes. This is really the main driver that's bringing people back in. And the other big shift that's happened coming out of the pandemic is people now value their health. It's, you know, they're seeing it as a change in their mental and their physical well-being. And that's what group fitness can offer through that community is both sides of physical and mental well-being. And uh, I think it's about 85% of people are say they're actively working out now or want to be actively working out. And you compare that to where we were pre-pandemic, there's just much more value on health. Yeah, so I, some of the important things coming out of the pandemic, as all of us saw, was this rise of digital and, and a, the fitness industry was behind in the digital landscape and we've moved forward two or three years. And live will always be the pinnacle, but now members are expecting a full omni-channel omni experience. They want to work out where they want to work out, when they want to work out, how they want to work out. So those clubs who are doing it best have a solution that offers on demand at home, live stream for those members who can't make it in but still want that live experience and that great live experience in club. And this will continue to be, it's just gonna be the table stakes for what people expect from their club now. The other changes we've seen is a real rise in strength training, particularly in women as they're coming back in, they're, they're hitting those weights. And so we've got some innovation happening in the Les Mills Lab of how we keep people um, strength training throughout because it's such a way to stay healthy. A big trend we're seeing emerge is how people talk about fitness. We used to say fitness and now it's movement. People are moving toward, I just want to move and I want to be healthy. So rather than I'm going to the gym for my physical health, I'm moving so that I can be healthy, that I want to have my, have my well-being. So for us as fitness professionals, it's how we change our language to be able to be inclusive of all those who are coming into our gyms and our classes for a variety of reasons. Um, the other shift we're seeing is um, we launched a virtual reality product during the pandemic and we're able to bring in this whole different people who are exercise, who had never exercised before, gamers and young men. We had um, 30,000 downloads on the Oculus in the first few weeks. So I think for gyms to really look outside of their current channels of how they're going to get other people in, we still have 80% of people not belonging to a gym. And how do we switch that trend where it's only 20% of people are not belonging to a gym? And that comes down to 
great experience with your instructors, with your front desk staff, that your people are your only thing that can't be re replicated, that omni-channel experience, and then a great experience in your club, how your studios are set up, how you're creating a, an atmosphere that is something you want to show up at and really is pulling you in, whether it's through the studio lighting, the electronics that you have running, and the environment. So we are offering 80% off our initial training for these students because of we think it's so important for how we can help them be the best instructor that they can be. And you know, some people would say, oh, pre-choreographed workouts, I, I don't want to do that. That's a cookie cutter approach. But the great thing about having your choreography and your music, which is best in class and refreshed every quarter, is as an instructor, you can show up as your authentic self. And that would be my advice to any instructor out there is to just really be you when you show up in your class because that's why people are coming. They want that connection with you and there's something that's drawing those participants to you. So rather than trying to replicate someone else or what you think they want, sit in your authentic self. And that's what our training does. We teach on the five key elements. So choreography and technique are important, but also our coaching, our connection, and our performance. And as part of our assessment and training, we um, grade, grade you on each of those five key elements so you can know really what you're strong at and what your development opportunities are. We think of teaching as an art, similar to you know, playing the piano or um, any musical instrument to martial arts that you're continuing on this progression. It's not a one and done. You wanna get, find out where you are, where you need to work on, and then continue to progress it. And we've got that personalized journey that allows you to progress all the way up to mastery. So in the next five to 10 years, I mean, we've made such massive changes in the industry in the last three. So it'll be exciting to see where we continue to go. What we know is that people are, our connection is still our core. So live will always be the pinnacle. So for clubs to have that best live experience and really look at how they enhance that live experience with other experiences. So having that best studio, the best music quality will, will be the pinnacle of how you drive those members in, whether it's this year or in five years, that's gonna remain important. Um, I think we'll see digital continue to expand and consumers either bringing the digital into the club or continuing to be able to have it at home, that full omni-channel experience of the workouts I do in any place are, are what I can see my progress on. And then this virtual reality will continue to rise of being immersed in our fitness experience. Cause I think that's what's gonna bring the next generation on. Um, I think we'll see some changes in clubs too. We're already starting to see it. So those budget clubs are starting to add in studios and more amenities that are at higher tiers. So they've got a different pricing tier to their membership. At the same time, boutiques are starting to add in more studios and adding in a gym floor space to offer a high, more of an offering to everyone, where our high-end gyms are now putting a boutique inside of their studios. So I think we'll see more and more amenities coming into clubs as they find their space.